For those of you who've been to a prior lecture series, um, we actually have spent most of that time talking about really tools that you can use as an evidence-based entrepreneur. So who here has heard of the Lean Startup as a, as a concept or read the book? Anyone read the book? All right, great. So part of what we're trying to deploy here is to take that concept of like Lean Startup and actually give you tools that you can use in your own startups. And so we've talked about things like idea generation and putting a process behind that, customer discovery. We spent time on actually using data-driven decision-making and, and using the crowd. And, and last time we went through 13 different types of MVPs. And uh, it's interesting when you start to actually think about how you use those different types of MVPs in different places. So we're going to go back through that a little bit just to tee up the conversation and talk about how we think about MVPs and what are the different types that you might deploy. So lean entrepreneurs essentially have a set of tools in their tool belts. And these are the six sets of tools really that hopefully by the end of this course you'll have in, in your tool belt to use. Um, today we're going to spend most of the time talking about customer development. And so that actually is taking you know, all of these principles and turning people from getting their input to actually getting their money. The concept at this point, as many of you know, we've talked about it, is that essentially you've probably gone from inspiration to some idea selection and, and really customer discovery. And at the point you're starting to think about what MVPs to do, you should talk to some people and really set up a, a scenario where you've talked to maybe 40 to 50 people and gotten enough validation that you're willing to go forward. <laughs> And so MVPs are a tool to help you go from kind of hunches and kind of some, some level of confidence into certainty. So we're trying to take you from that place where you feel pretty good about your idea and actually get to a place where you're like, I'm quitting my job and going after them. That's what MVPs are for, is to help take from a few conversations that might be helpful and turn that into actually the next step. So hopefully where you all are um, when you're starting to deploy MVPs is you have talked to 40 to 50 different people in the industry, gotten feedback that feels really good about it, survey the market and you're ready to take this to the next level. And that's where we jump in with thinking about MVPs. Hopefully many of you have used what's called a business model canvas. It's one of the best tools out there for actually putting your business model on one single page. Um, who here has ever created a business model canvas? Okay. It's a great tool if you, if you have, for those of you that haven't, to actually put all of your business concept on one page. And, I, and I will, I'll tell you, I still use this even with venture-backed funded companies because it's a great way to actually think about your business all in one page. Once you've gotten confidence that, as I like to say, the dogs will eat the dog food, and so you're essentially gone out there and you, you've gotten enough feedback to know that there's something there, that's when we take this to the next level. And so this is essentially what a minimum viable product is. It's the smallest feature set that gets you something. It gets you the most learnings, the most orders, the most insights. Whatever it is, is you're essentially getting something that helps you advance the next level. And so, essentially that each of these tests is designed to teach you something. It's either teach you that you continue on in this journey, or something's not quite right, you need to go back and rethink again. That's what an MVP is. So again, it's designed not to be something that's massive. The key thing is minimum. So here's some examples of MVPs. All of these are things that I've actually used at one time or another. Every one of these is an MVP. So don't get the idea that you have to have an app that's you know, out there in the, in the app store for that to be an MVP. It's much simpler than that. Interviews can be MVPs. AdWords testing, kind of using other solutions, social media, all of these things are, can be MVPs. And so as we talk about it today and kind of dive into some examples, you'll see these are all things that you can use to test and learn. And there is no one or right, you know, right or wrong MVP. As long as you learn from it, it's, it's, it's a right MVP in my opinion. And so ultimately, as you start to build these tests out, you're, again, you're focusing on the thing that gets you the most learnings, the most orders, the most insights, and, and ultimately, sometimes fails. You're ultimately looking for things that are, that are telling you yes or no. So the question that some people ask me next, which is what we talked about in the last course a little bit, is so what tests should you run? Now you'll see here that I've got a list of about 13 different MVPs here. All of these are different, and many of these have multiple different things in it. There's things all the way from interviews down to crowdfunding. How do you know what's the right one to use? And is there a right or a wrong one? Well, it turns out the first thing to know is there is no right or wrong MVP. There's ultimately just the best guess, the best time for what you think your company needs. And so the whole purpose here is to give you a whole list of different things you can try, but ultimately it's a little bit of trial and error. Sometimes you're going to be testing which is the right MVP approach to learn what you need to learn. There's ultimately a way to think about organizing MVPs kind of on a two-axis test a two-axis grid, and one of them is on coverage and one is on product fidelity. 
And so ultimately what you're trying to figure out on the coverage line is the number of customers you reach. So in some senses, if you do an interview or a series of interviews, you're just going to reach a small set of people. So it has a pretty low coverage ratio. Whereas if you test this on AdWords or you do something where you actually launch this online, it has a much higher coverage ratio. So that's what I mean by coverage. When you're doing your MVP, you should think about, do I need to test this on a small number of people or do I want to test this on N, the world number of people? So that's the coverage one. The second one is product fidelity. This is an important thing to understand. How much do I need to know that this is actually like my product or it's an approximation for my product or it's something that learns will help me identify my product? So ultimately, in some cases, when you're doing interviews, you might just be asking a series of questions, low product fidelity, or you might be doing a wireframe, which might have a higher bit of product fidelity, ultimately to a, pr a true kind of minimum early first version, full of product features, that would be something that has pride high <laughs> product fidelity. And the reason it's important, because it helps you think about which MVP is the right fit for you. As I like to say, usually, you want to start your company in the bottom lower hand corner, where it's low fidelity and few coverage. Ultimately, you're doing that so that you can learn in an easy place. So ultimately, interviews sit in that bottom corner. And ultimately, you're going to go up one axis or the other one as you're testing over time, with the goal of being the upper right quadrant. So that's part of the process here is thinking about always start your MVP testing in the bottom left hand corner and move your way to the upper right and you can figure out ways to get there. But that's part of the trick here is why interviews are actually an MVP is that they help you learn something in a very low fidelity and low coverage place that can help you get up to the top. So part of the approach for you guys as entrepreneurs is picking a strategy for what is the right kind of MVP that you need. So when I bring you guys up here for the workshop portion of this, I'm going to ask you about where you think you fit. So do you think that you're the place where you've got a pretty good sense where you, you've got good results so far and so you're looking for something that's kind of on the up on the high fidelity area or up on the, the coverage ratio? You're ultimately looking to start very early on just in the, the low coverage and low fidelity place and then essentially once you get some heads nodding, you want to go up one of the axes. So you want to build something that shows more of an example of how your product would actually look still keep it with a small number of people but build up. Or you might want to say, I want to know if I can test this on AdWords. And so you'll run this with you know, thousands of people on AdWords. Ultimately, if you're going up those two axes, you're going to see, is there better aligned to the product or are people really liking this? And as you get more and more positive news, you're going to flip the other side to ultimately end up in the upper right. So if you think at the point, wow, this thing that I've got in my hand might actually work, that's when you want to be in the upper right hand corner. So the real trick in all of this, and kind of if I leave you guys with one key piece of it, is just do it. Like, there is no right or wrong here. Ultimately, the only right is that you do it. So the whole purpose of this course is just to give you confidence that I've done some super dumb things with MVPs. Like, I've tested things that seem stupid. I've run adverse campaigns that failed miserably. But ultimately, those failures help you learn a lot. So again, part of the trick here is just saying, just do it. So if I urge any of you guys to do anything the next week, pick something, whatever it is, some kind of a test that you want to run and run it. The next question that people always ask me is, well, how do you actually test? What are you trying to test and how are you kind of getting that going? And so I kind of break the testing thing into three different places. Um, and again, it kind of lines up to how you're actually going up those axes of MVPs. So the first one is hunch. The second one is trying to get confident. And the third one is trying to get certain. So these are three different kind of stages of what type of tests you're running. So hunches. Essentially what you are, you're at the hunch place, is that you're looking for things that can kind of give you that you're headed in the right direction. You're basically looking to see your gut is telling you you should go for it, and you're looking for validation on that. So when you're testing things, you're not looking for necessarily like lots of feedback or lots of surveys and things like that. You're more looking at broad themes, so research, experience, interviews with close contacts. Again, you've got a hunch there's something here, and you're going to continue to run after it. So that's the first part of kind of testing protocol is these are the types of things you should do if you're testing your hunch. Look for those type of things where you might interview someone who's an expert in the field or talk to a family member who might have a, have a business in the area you want to serve. The next piece is really about confident. You're trying to get confident that this is something worth going after. Now again, you've kind of got this gut that there's something here, but you're not totally sure if it's right or not. This is where customer discovery becomes very important. You're ultimately looking to talk to people that you don't know. You ultimately will get told whatever you want to hear by your parents. They love you, they think your startup is going to be super successful, but they're probably wrong. So this is the stage where you get out of that kind of talking to people you know and start to move out of that group and talk to people you don't know. 
Um, ultimately, you're trying to get enough feedback that you're going to share your idea with your mom. That's kind of my test or your spouse. You're looking to say that like, hey, I've got enough feedback and I've heard from enough people that you could tell your mom and she could be like, my son or daughter might be very bright. Um, give them a little bit of information that feels like you know, there's a there there. And again, that, that means that there's something going on here that you feel like that, that it's worth running after. Now again, I'm not saying post this on the world that you're leaving your job, but again, as you're trying to get confident, you're hearing good things from people and you're seeming like it's moving on. Now that's part of this testing. A lot of these are interviews or things that you might be hearing. And finally, certainty. This is what you're looking for, saying like, hey, I'm at a place where I'm willing to quit my job and run after this. This is the kind of testing where you're looking for much higher volumes of people to tell you you're on the right path. So I like to say you want double and triple digit feedback. So you're looking to see to talk to <coughs> hundreds or thousands of people, um, and that might mean via survey, that might be via test, whatever it might be. But ultimately, certainty is things where you're finding the input is repeatable, and you're finding things that there's quite a bit much higher fidelity with the approach you want to take. At the end of the day, you're looking to hear good things from lots of people. So this is certainty. And again, a lot of the tests that we'll talk about today are when you're at the point where you're starting to look for certainty. Some of that will be in the confident area, but ultimately you're looking for certainty. Why does it matter? Why does it matter you know, whether or not you're confident or you're a hunch or you're certain? Ultimately it matters because if you're wanting to get certainty, that means you're wanting to basically figure out if you're on the right path. And so again, it's a, it's a spectrum. You're starting out early on just discovering if there's something worth pursuing. And then you're discovering like, is this something that I should talk about and spend more time on? And finally you're looking, should I go talk to investors? Should I quit my job? Should I recruit partners and co-founders? That's kind of this process here and one of the things that MVPs are great at is helping you get certainty. So again, think about it that way. Starting with your hunches, you're working your way up to being confident in your, yourself and ultimately you're going from confidence to certainty by doing a bunch of MVP tests. We're going to talk about three areas in a bonus area tonight. Um, so we're going to look to see someone who wants to get feedback on a concept that they might want to work on that has a web component to it. Look for someone who wants to do something in mobile, um, has a concept they think might be a great app. We'll look for someone who wants to build a community. So these are, I want to create a Facebook version for doctors, or I want to create, I think I used this before, uh, Facebook for dogs. That's a community kind of a project where you want to get a bunch of people together. And people oftentimes talk about they want to build a, build a network or a community. And finally, the last one that we'll do is, is someone who wants to do something on Kickstarter. So Kickstarter essentially is a way that you can pre-sell items that you may not yet have fully created. You might have a prototype or a working demo, but ultimately you can pre-sell it on Kickstarter. <coughs>